I now want to take a moment to introduce you to someone who is the voice of and for aging right here in Boston. He's committed to transforming Boston into an age-friendly city, which includes the development of a housing plan that recognizes the special needs of Boston's older adults. Please welcome the mayor of this fine city and a passionate advocate for older people, the Honorable Martin Walsh. How are you? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, we commend you for your vision and for encouraging citizens of every age to engage in civic life as you seek to create a thriving, healthy, innovative city for Boston's residents and neighborhoods. And I'm honored to present you today the Leading Age Chair Citation. And it reads, Leading Age Chair Citation presented to the Honorable Martin J. Walsh, Mayor of Boston, for outstanding leadership, service, and commitment to an age-friendly Boston, including the development of housing, a changing city, Boston 2030, which is a comprehensive housing plan that recognizes the specialized needs of Boston's older adults. We commend you for your vision and for encouraging citizens of every age to engage in civic life as you seek to create a thriving, healthy, innovative city of Boston for all of its residents and neighborhoods. November 2015. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Let me put my award down here for a second. Wanna... Wow, this is an incredible crowd. Thank you very much. It's great, uh, it's great to have everyone here in the city of Boston. I want to thank David uh, for, his, uh, for the award, but also for being here in our city. I want to thank Larry as well and everyone at Leading Age. Uh, and Larry, congratulations on your retirement at the end of this year. Uh, I know that you've done some incredible work uh, for Leading Age, and I truly appreciate it, especially for the last 13 years as president. I also want to give a shout out to Alyssa Sherman, president of Leading Age Massachusetts. I want to, I'm sorry, it's in the middle there somewhere. We're very happy today that the conference is today because the Patriots played last Thursday, so we're all set all day long today. Uh, it is an honor to receive this award, and it's an honor on behalf of uh, all of us at City Hall for the great work that's being done in our city for seniors. And I'd like to be able to, I can't take the credit for it all. We, we have an incredible team. I'm going to talk about some of my team that's here in a few minutes, but I want to thank them. I want to thank Leading Age for the exhibit they created in this conference, celebrating Boston, the commitment to being age friendly. They're also hosting a public awareness exhibit around positive aging on the road, Rose Candy Greenway downtown. I encourage everyone to take it out, and I want to do a, a special shout out to Rogerson Jewish Community for the Elderly and the Hebrew Senior Life uh, for hosting tours today. And I know those two great organizations in this room who do so much in our city. I also want to acknowledge the Commissioner of Elderly Affairs for the City of Boston, Emily Shea. Emily, Emily and her team have been working so hard to make Boston an age-friendly city, an example for others to follow. And of course, they want to welcome, as I do, want to welcome everyone here to this great city. We're thrilled to host the Leading Age Annual Conference this year. 8,500 people are here in Boston for this conference, which is incredible. The last time we hosted this conference was 23 years ago. And unfortunately, you couldn't make it back until now because we didn't have a venue big enough to host it. But we certainly do now. And we're excited to have you all here at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center on the South Boston waterfront. We're looking to forward to hearing how you're supporting seniors in your communities and how you look forward to learning from each other about how to build a truly age-friendly society. Here in Boston, we're dedicated to making our city one of the best places in the country to age. National polls rank us in the top five cities that do most of their seniors. It's because in Boston, we have a great respect for our seniors. They are the ones who built our city and the reason why Boston is so successful today. They're also important to our future. Boston has a thriving senior population, which is always growing. By 2030, older Americans will make up one-fifth of our population. So when we plan our city's future, we're making sure that our seniors are every part of that discussion. Last year, the city released an Aging in Boston report. It gave us important data about life in Boston and suggestions on how we can do better. Then we can collaborated with UMass Boston and Len, excuse, Len Fishman, who's here with us, and the, and the Institute and the AARP, 
for launching age, the Age Friendly Project. We're also thankful for Tufts University, Tufts Health Plan, for their generous support. We're using the World Health Organization, AARP, to frame and guide us in how we support our seniors and how to enable people to do that as well. As a city, we want to make sure we are building the future that puts our seniors first. While programs and services are essential, we also need to focus on how we can improve the quality of life. So we're looking at all areas of the city through an ageless lens. Making our city age-friendly doesn't only benefit our seniors, it benefits all of its residents of all ages. We're making sure our neighborhoods are secure and our parks are accessible. We're making sure everyone can use the subway, buses, and sidewalks in safety. And in the end, a city that works for seniors is a city that works for everyone. One of our top priorities and why we were recognized for this award is our priority to create more supportive and safe housing for our residents. We can clap. In our housing plan, we committed to creating 5,000 new senior units, including 1,500 affordable units by the year 2030. We put 1.75 million in this year's budget to support the development of senior housing. We've also submitted legislation that will provide a source of ongoing state funds for our seniors. And I want to also introduce the Chief of Housing for the City of Boston who put this plan together, Chief Sheila Dillon's with us today. So I want to thank Sheila Dillon for her great work. We understand the economic hardships that seniors face on fixed incomes, especially in trying to afford the utilities they rely on. So we developed a senior savings program to help seniors replace the old inefficient furnaces. Our Boston and Water and Sewer Department, that's controlled by the city, reduced discounted rates for 30% for seniors. And we asked other utilities to follow suit. And when we asked those utilities to follow suit, we weren't getting the response that we needed. So we made sure that we set the bar by making sure that we're doing it in City Hall first with the water and sewer. We're proud of the progress we've made over the past 24 months, but we know there's always more can be done for our seniors. So we're asking Boston seniors to be, be part of our project in partnering in age-friendly Boston. Right now, we're learning about more specific needs for our community. We've spoken to over 60 senior groups and conducting 20 listening sessions all across our city. We're collecting 5,000 surveys offered in six different languages. We also remain committed to raising awareness on the health issues that our seniors face. That especially includes diseases for which there's no known cure yet. And we're the first large city to join the Alzheimer's Workplace Alliance. We're working with the Alzheimer's Association to hold sessions for city employees to learn more about the disease and get connected to the information and other resources. And today, I'm proud to announce that Boston will join the Dementia Friendly America Network. Age is one of the greatest risk factors for dementia. While we'll focus on ma making Boston age friendly, we're also going to make sure our city is dementia friendly. That means making sure our buildings are obviously in obvious and distinctive and easy to navigate. Making sure patients and caregivers have access to organized activities and support the needs for other people. And increasing clinical support and at home services. It means making sure the whole community is dementia aware and that they look for our seniors and keep them engaged in a supportive environment. This past week, we started training our EMS, EMS, our ambulance drivers and first responders to be dementia capable. We hope that this training and education available to more departments and more businesses in our city, we want to make sure it's just not our first responders, but we want to make sure that every city employee understands this. I know we'll learn a lot from all of you at this conference today about how we, we, can, we can make our future the most inclusive for all our seniors. So once again, I want to thank you all for being here in the city of Boston. I want to thank you for hosting this very important conversation, this conference here, because we certainly will learn from you. And I want to thank you for the work that each agency in this room does today for what you do in your cities, your towns, and your states across this great country. I hope to see you back here soon, and thank you again, and enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.